Welcome. Well, you're at home with Jim and Joy, and you are an important part of our EWTN family. And we're delighted that you've welcomed us to in, into your home. You know, we want to hear from you. Amen. And today is a live show. It's Monday, so it's live. And we're taking your questions. And so we want you to give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. Be a part of our live show. We would love to hear from you. If you're calling and you're outside North America, you can reach us at area code 205-271-2980. You can always send us an email during the show with your question to jimandjoy at ewtn.com or you can reach out to us in Twitter land, twitter.com forward slash jimandjoypinto. Well, today we're going to be talking about the beautiful theme of our home as a sanctuary. Yeah, yeah. Because our home is the domestic church, right? Right. And so, you know, and I have the privilege of sometimes being a co-host for Religious Catalog, and I get to sell religious items. And one of the things that Mother Angelica always says about our home, that they really, we should fill our home and every room in our home mm -hmm. with holy reminders. Because when we come into our house, yeah. when our children come into our house, when strangers come into our house, when those beautiful grandchildren <laughs> come into our house, which we love, we want them to see what we believe and know who we love. Right. And that's Jesus and them, yeah. and so our house should reflect that in ways. That's important. So just think about that, because that's our theme for today, and we want you to call in, email us, tweet a comment or a question. What does home, what does your house as sanctuary mean to you? What did it mean to you as you were growing up in your home? Was it sanctuary? What made it sanctuary? So we try to pray each week about our Monday shows and what we should share. And we really felt like this was a part of it. It has so many dimensions, sanctuary, safety, security, spirituality, safety and peace for you, for your family, or perhaps for others, periodically taking in your own family members or others, missionaries, those that need a place, like we took in family members from South Carolina. God bless all the people in the Carolinas still recuperating, recovering, still going through so much. Maybe it's um, consecrating your home, which we did recently, to the Immaculate Heart of Mary and the Sacred Heart of Jesus. You can go to enthronements.com, enthronements.com. Since we did that several months ago, we've had all these people coming into our house. Yes. Okay. We had our, our family members that were fleeing uh, uh, the hurricane. And then we've just had visitors and family. We have somebody else coming, coming in, in tonight. tonight. Mm -hmm. And I, I was in bed, you know, and just before we went to sleep, and I was praying to the Lord, Lord, you know, was everything okay in our house? And we got these people here. It's going to be okay. And I, it was almost as if Our Lady and Jesus said, we got this. Mm -hmm. We got this. And it's so nice in, in thinking of home as sanctuary to know that the saints are with you, that you've invited them to come in. You've sanctified your house to the sacred heart and immaculate heart of Jesus. And it was as if I heard them and saying, you're not alone mm -hmm. in entertaining your guests. Right. That we're here with you. We've got this together. Right. And that's what home consecration does in sanctifying your house in a variety of ways, not just enthronements. But how are you doing that? We want to hear from you. Well, and one of the things that I love, and I'm reading this great book, and um, E.W. Chan sells it. It's called Angels at Your Side. And there okay. are angels in our home. There are angels. I'll have these little feather pillows, and every now and then this little white feather will be on the floor, and the grandchildren go, Nona, here's a feather. And yeah. I'll say, oh, that's my angel. Yeah. She must have just took off somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Because there are angels with us. Do Are we sensitive to their presence and their power? Mm -hmm. Are we encamping them at our front door and our back door, and that they are arresting every foul and yeah. unclean spirit that might enter our and home? And, you know, there are limits. Okay, it's not magic uh, praying uh, for your home to be a holy place, a sacred abode, living your life in such a way that's a faithful life, a holy life, a forgiving life. But it's also not, not magical, and it's not a guarantee right. that, that, that something might not happen to your home. I'm sure there are plenty of people in South Carolina, North Carolina, that have home consecrations and are living a, a blessed life. 
and sometimes bad things mm -hmm. still happen to your house. So there are limits in a fallen world and free will and your own children and what could take place. But nonetheless, to intentionally and willfully every day in prayer mm -hmm. and in various times, maybe it's the epiphany blessing, you know, that you put over your, your doorpost, but to say, as for me in this house, we serve the Lord. And we invite all the angels and saints into our home to be a safe and a peaceful abode. So we want to hear from you. We're going to take a break. Think about this. Give us a call. Uh, give us a tweet, email us. What does it mean, uh, the home as sanctuary? So we'll be right back. Plenty more to come. This is your day. Don't go away. Well, today we're taking your questions, so we want you to give us a jingle at 1-800-221-9460. If you're calling and you're outside North America, you can reach us at 205-271-2980. You can always send us an email, jimandjoy at ewtn.com, or reach us on Twitter, twitter.com forward slash Jim and Joy Pinto. We're talking about creating our homes as a sanctuary. For me, I mean, I had the privilege of being a stay-at-home mom for 22 years. And um, we made an intentional decision to live off of one salary. We didn't have a lot, but what we had, we made it a lot. Yeah. And, um, and it was beautiful and it was a privilege. I mean, I, I got that and I was very thankful for your hard work and that we can make that happen. But to, to say that my home is a sanctuary, what does that mean as a wife and a mother? You know, you're sending your children out when they're starting school and you're, you're trying to make peace. And I think peace in the home is a great grace that God gives to us. And I think it needs to be set, hopefully intentionally by the parents, yeah. by having a marriage that is strong and united, lest those little children come to divide and conquer. And they will try and yeah. do that, but right. we're like, no, we're united frontier. And, and to really create an environment intentionally where there's rules, there's discipline, there's a structure, there's smells to your home. My kids love walking in the house when we got pasta on the stove and I got a great sauce going and breads and cookies. And, you know, those are the smells that register deep in your subconscious yeah. and you go, I'm home. That's, that's mom's cooking. That's I, always, I always say a cooking sauce, a red sauce, the smell, the aroma of that saved me from a life of crime. You do <laughs> believe kept that. Kept me at home. My, those beautiful Italian coming. women that were cooking that, instead of going out and doing bad things, say, oh, Jimmy, boy, just smell this. We Can got meatballs a... in here. Come in here. Joy, eat. let's take a phone call. We got Robert on the phone. Uh, Robert, thanks for joining us on At Home with Jim and Joy. Your question, your comment, please. Yeah, I love your show, Jim and Joy. Thanks for having me. Thank you. I'm uh, uh, Robert Sella. I'm involved in a lay ministry and keeping with the really interesting topic you have. It's called the missionaries of the sacred heart in in birmingham and it's very much in keeping with your topic it's uh really to consecrate homes to the sacred heart of jesus and the immaculate heart of mary and really our main purpose and mission is to invite people to enter into a, a covenant of love with christ to be the lord of the household mm. uh to turn away you know from the modern paganism so that he can be enshrined. And as you say, uh, the aromas in your home help, kept you close. The enshrinement of Jesus and his sacred image also yes. keeps people there. And, and he is recognized as, as that king of the household. And so really, the consecration itself is more than just a consecration of the, the dwelling, the house it bleeds over into the family itself, uh, even deceased family members, living and deceased, yes. so that that covenant of love will be redeeming for all everybody. Mm -hmm. So that the home really is a new Bethany. Um, mm -hmm. It's it's really uh, really a neat thing. But I, I did have a quick question for you. Okay. Um, do you, uh, Jim and Joy, do you see the domestic church as a body of you know, as part of the mystical body of Christ, 
uh, can that be a way of invigorating the church itself? Thank you so much, Robert. Well, I say yes, um, because as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. And we go, when we go to church, we go as a family. Our children, it was a non-negotiable. You didn't get the right to say, I don't feel like going to church today. I mean, that just like wasn't said. You lived in our house, you went to church. I guess you, you could say that, but you but were going. It wasn't going to happen. <laughs> okay. um, and so, and, and they did, and they came to church, and we, and we went, and we brought our A game. And what is our A game when we're bringing it to church? Hopefully, we're going to be ready to receive the sacraments. We're going to be ready to worship God. We're going to be ready to love the Lord our God with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. And they're going to see that manifested, not just in this way, just you and Jesus, but they're going to see it manifested in the marriage, in the working out of the relationship with the children, in how we forgive, in how we discipline, yeah. with our tenderness, with our love. Um, yes, I mean, they need to look at our marriage and see Jesus is alive and well. They need to look at our family, and it has to be an outpouring of manifestation yeah. of God's love into the church. The family, the domestic church, that's, that's pivotal. That's the center. Everything else is built from that our Lord himself chose by an act of his will to live in a family there at, at Nazareth. So this is absolutely critical, and we know from the Fatima teachings and, and from Sister Lucia, I think who spoke with Cardinal Kafara in, in, a, in a discussion via mail, she said that the final battle will be about marriage and the family in this world. It's, it's coming, the kingdom of Christ versus Satan. It's about the family. It's all over the place. Yes. And so the strengthening of the family, the consecrating of the home, family as sanctuary in the midst of this world that's coming after our children, coming after our marriages, redefining marriage. You really can't redefine marriage. You can just speak some kind of redefinition. But yes, yeah, so we need to be together in a sanctuary, the home, mm -hmm. teaching, instructing, directing, warning our children, and to be open, to be fruitful, to multiply, to fill the world, to subdue the world. Mm -hmm. The family is absolutely essential, Robert. So thank you for your question. And you know, I think it's so important for when we're out in the world and we want to be witnesses and the reading today in the gospel was don't hide your light under a bushel. We have to go into the darkness. Sometimes the darkness is the school setting. Sometimes it's workplaces. Um, and so you have to go and be light. And where are you going to be fortified and strengthened? You're coming from your home. And like when we leave church on Sunday and, the, and you're being sent out into the world. So we do that in our home yeah. and we send everybody out. We bless them, we fortify them, strengthen them in yeah. their spiritual life so that they go out and love. And you know what? It's simple things like being kind to your classmates, being kind to your teacher, being kind to your co-workers. We all think it's, oh, it's going to be so supernatural. No, it's just like show up and be a nice worker. Give right. God your best. But it's got, it's got to be happening in the home. Right. In the sanctuary of the home. I mean, this has to be seen and modeled and we have to exhort our children in that way. And when we fail in that, to confess and to be forgiven and to go out, the schools aren't going to be teaching oh, this. Yeah. The world isn't going to be right. teaching this. Mm -hmm. The world's mocking what we believe as Christians and as Catholics. That's a part of the teaching also to our children. Our kids got to get some grit. Mm -hmm. They got to know that they're going out into a difficult world. And so even if you're homeschooling, whatever you're doing, they're going to be interacting. Right with the world. How do they conduct themselves in love, in tolerance, but uncompromisingly, unapologetically Catholic? Yes. Give us a phone call. The number's up there. We want to hear from you. Joy, let's take this email. It said, I would like to open my home to others, but how do I discern the balance in my home as sanctuary for my family and welcoming others into it? And this is Dawn from Parma, Ohio. It's a great that, question. That's a great Thank question. You. And we welcomed people into our homes. Sometimes they were strangers. <laughs> and um, well, we this had, is over 41 years. Right. But, and we've done different things at different times. Right. And w this, the, the time that we did this, and it was a discerning time, it was a real peaceful time in our house. Our, the ages of our children was a great age. And we had five girls in unplanned pregnancy come and live with us. Not all at once. Not all at <laughs> once, yes. You know, sequentially they came and mm -hmm. we did that. And it was good and it was right and it was easy. Um, but it stretched us, right? right? And so you have to know and everybody has to be in. 
you gr agree as a husband and wife, is this good for us to do this? You have to discern that. You have to be prayerful. Yeah. Don't just flip out of your head and go, oh, I just felt like this. No, it's not by what we feel, what, what is good for the marriage, what is good for the yeah. family. And then do we as a family move forward and say yes to this? Yeah. And sometimes it's family members. We welcomed family members who needed needed a sanctuary. They were having situations in their lives and my mother would call and say, your younger brother needs to come, he needs help. Okay, then he came. My younger sister, you know, your family members sometime need to come and they stayed with yeah. us for a couple of months and, and lived with us. But it is definitely, this is where mm -hmm. your home is sanctuary. If, if there's husband and wife there, that you're praying every day, you're discerning and you want God's will to be done and you have to consider that with every person that you might be considering to have in. Who is this person? Do we know this person? How long are we thinking about here? What's the condition of our own marriage at this time? What is the stage of development that our children are at? Is this good for us or not? Maybe we could do something for a day or two, but we mm -hmm. can't do it for weeks and months. You need to know what the question is. So as long as you're asking that and you're before the Lord in prayer, maybe get some counsel from your deacon, a priest, uh, your spiritual director, a trusted friend mm -hmm. because that is an important question because it does shift everything around right but we are as as family uh, it's not simply for ourselves I mean it, it is but also there's that calling to love life to serve society to welcome the stranger to show hospitality I can remember when we first moved to Birmingham uh, from New Jersey and, and that was when I was serving as uh, as a minister in another tradition and we were in Fairfield, Alabama. That's where we are now. We're still there after 38 years. But I, I can remember having a lot of, there's a lot of uh, boys and girls without parents. I'd say 90% do not have, a, have a, a father in the family. And we were taking so many of these boys and girls just through our house and they were coming in and we getting to know us. And I said, Lord, um, you know, what am I doing? I've been off to seminary and we're trained and we're here and it just seems like I'm just dealing with kids and I'm throwing a football around and getting to know them. And the Lord said, the best thing you could do for this community is to stay married, love your wife, and welcome these kids into your family. It didn't mean they all stayed with us and, and slept there or lived but with they us. They would show up at 7 o'clock in the morning and want breakfast and lunch and be with us as much as we could welcome them in. But they didn't see a mom and a dad married. Right. We've got generations of children mm -hmm. who don't know what a mom and a dad is, a husband and a wife. Mm -hmm. Now, he might be the child of, uh, and have brothers and sisters, you know, in other homes and other relationships. So don't underestimate. And it might be them coming through your house just for a few hours or for a day that they bring friends by and you've got to test all things and know what your limits are because you need your own sanctuary time and peace time. But people just need to see people who love Christ. Yes. Who, who will welcome them no matter what they look like or smell like and they're coming in through the home. And that they could see a husband and wife that are basically happy together, that we love marriage, we love the family, and we want to share our lives with others. Mm -hmm. This is part of the mission of the home, that the home is for us primarily and to be sanctuary. But it's also that people can taste and see that the Lord is good. Think about sanctuary and think about the sanctuary, the Catholic Church, mm -hmm. going into that sanctuary the presence of the Lord. Our home should have the presence of the Lord. We don't have the real presence in terms of Holy Eucharist, but every home should have the aroma of Christ. Every home should have a taste of the Lord. People should be able to come in as, as they come into a Catholic church, even those who aren't Catholic, and they say, there's something special in here. My mm -hmm. church doesn't look like that. I love all these stained glass windows. What's that little house with that candle burning? Well, what is that about? And like you said, mm -hmm. the different sacramentals, the things that we have, they're curious about it. And we thank God that our grandchildren always say, we love your house, Nona. Yes. They always say Nona, they don't say Baba. Well, we love your house. They do. Well, yeah. even Isaiah, we had Isaiah, this is our oldest son's um, youngest child, and he was with us for the a weekend. And he came in and he was laying on the couch. You know, it's that old magical time when after they've had their bath and they're kind of winding down from the day. And he was just sitting there looking around and he goes, Nona, you have so much of Jesus around here, you know? <laughs> and I said, yes, Isaiah, I do. And I hope you know how much Nona loves Jesus. And, and, and he, uh, can you feel his presence? Is it good for you? And then they love, and I make it special because I want to make it special. I yeah. make their bed special in their, in their rooms. They have angels in the rooms and the angels are laying down. And I always say to our grandchildren, yeah sleep with the angels, we pray with them, I lay in the yeah. bed with them, I scratch their arms till they fall asleep. Yeah. It's, it's, 
It just should be a yeah, special place. What is your home saying? When people walk into your home, what does it say? What are you about? What do you believe? What do they see? What's happening in it? What, what's the aroma, so to speak, spiritual and otherwise? Whether you're, you're single or you're widowed or whatever it might be, it doesn't have to be a wealthy home or whatever. It's a simple home, simple Bethlehem, mm -hmm. simple Nazareth. Is an email, Joy. It says, what is the relationship between house blessings and spiritual warfare? It seems the more I seek personal and family consecration, the greater the battle <sighs> wages. Do you have any advice? And this is Bob from Seattle, Washington. I think there's something to it. Yes. Um, and the house blessings, having a priest in to bless your home, the consecration, your own prayers and so on. I think it has an impact spiritually. Mm -hmm. I really do. I think it pushes out evil. You know, when, when we're united that way, and the, the one who wants to divide and accuse us can't get in there as readily as when we're doing this. So I really do think it's something, and yet you don't do it just once. You, know, right. you have to continue to consecrate and sanctify again and again. And yes, Satan can push back. Mm -hmm. And it's sometimes it's like this is an affront to him, and all of a sudden you get these little attacks of things are going on. So I, I thought we, we just prayed and we sanctified our house and nothing else is supposed to happen here. Again and again, the enemy came after Jesus. Even when he fasted those, those 40 days and everything. But Satan would come and, and Jesus repelled him. But it said he waited for an opportune time to come back. Mm -hmm. I mean, Satan doesn't let up. Right. <clears throat> and you can't let up. We can't let up. We will not be intimidated because we know the end of the story. That Jesus Christ, who is Lord of the living and the dead, is coming again. That he is victorious no matter what happens in this world. And we are making ourselves ready for him but we have to continue to pursue this way. So I think it has a tremendous effect. It doesn't mean that the enemy isn't going to try and attack right. you and test you right. and discourage you to say, well, this prayer doesn't make any difference in my life. It really is making a difference, a world of difference, an eternal difference. Well, and at the back of our door, as we go out, we have a holy word of font, and that is really beautiful. We purchased it at EWTNRC.com. If you don't have one in your house, get one. You can get holy Amen. water from usually your church. And you have it there so that you bless yourself as you leave, and you bless yourself when you come back in, like that scripture. Bless our going out and yeah. our coming in, yeah. and that's an important yeah. thing to do. A simple thing as that matters. The weapons of our warfare aren't of this world. Mm. We're not talking about bazookas and, and rockets and whatever. Prayer fasting, sacramentals, consecration, they will have their impact and Christ will prevail in your home. May your home be a sanctuary, a place of peace for you, a place of peace for your loved ones as you take them in, a place of peace for others. We're going to take a break. We'll be right back. Please don't go away. today's topic. We certainly enjoyed sharing about the beautiful part of making your sanctuary your home, making your first spiritual, your body, um, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. That's our, what we should be doing. And then our dwelling place, which is so important. Amen. And so we want to continue to hear from you. You can write us all week long, email us, tweet, and know that every Monday is this time for us to open up, so to speak, the doors of our home to you. That you would come right on in and fellowship with Jim and Joy. Be sure to join us on Wednesday when our guest will be John Price. He'll be discussing living the message of Fatima as a family. And remember, you're always at home with Jim and Joy. You are an important part of the EWTN family. May your home be a blessed sanctuary a place of peace. May it have the aroma of Christ. God bless you and all of your loved ones. Keep it on EWTN. Bye now.